Hello everyone, and welcome to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Joel's corpse is discovered. Next week, the mystery behind Joel's disappearance will be resolved, but not before a fresh line of inquiry puts multiple locals in possible danger of being charged with murder. Joel was last spotted two weeks ago after missing his court date and appearing to be intoxicated during a meltdown in Roy's roles. Joel soon collected himself, though, and told the audience that it had all been a performance once he had left the cafe and was out of Roy and Carla's line of sight. Joel had left Dee Dee an emotional message that evening, hinting that he was getting ready to commit himself, when he was sitting in his car and had somehow sustained a head wound. When Joel's car was later discovered abandoned, the police quickly declared him dead, but Dee Dee was certain there was more to it. Viewers could clearly see that this was all a hoax. In the meantime, Kit learned that lead investigator Lisa's teenage daughter Betsy had been receiving threatening texts from Joel. Consequently, after chasing Joel for several months, Lisa was disappointed to be removed from the case and given to Kit. Jacob Roberts says she's been giving it to him for a while, so he doesn't feel guilty at all. I understand that she is his supervisor, but he believes he is better than her even though she believes he is much more capable in terms of the work. They always make fun of each other, so he's relieved she's not on the case so he can hopefully win this one. The following week, Kit and Craig carry out more research and discover CCTV evidence showing Joel and his father Gus going to a train station locker separately. Kit calls Gus in to inquire about the location of his son. Three teenagers on a distant riverside are startled to see a body floating in the water in the meantime. Later, Craig informs Kit and Lisa that Joel has been discovered dead, and Kit gets ready to inform Dee Dee and Lauren at the hospital as well. But when Joel's post-mortem shows that there was no water in his lungs, the case takes a further turn. Joel had passed away before reaching the sea. Now a murder inquiry is underway. 2. Mason is viewed with distrust. Lisa is later informed by Kit that Joel was killed by two hits to the skull administered by a blunt object, most likely a crowbar. Although there are plenty of them on the streets, viewers will quickly remember that we last saw one concealed with a balaclava in Mason's rucksack. Mason's elder brothers had tried to coerce him into participating in an armed heist, but Stu ultimately persuaded Mason to decline, even if there would be consequences. Stu had offered Mason a room at his and Yasmin's house, but after Mason's brother Logan broke through their window with a brick, Yasmin had ordered Mason to leave. Knowing that Betsy has been hanging out with Mason, Lisa is shocked to learn from Yasmin that he had a crowbar on him that day and tells her daughter not to get near him. Mason tries to put the crowbar in one of the bins behind the plant when Betsy tells him the police are watching him for something. Sadly for him, Kit has been observing Mason and witnesses him doing it. Jacob says, Kit knows someone is lying. On the street, people are acting strangely, and there are a few possible offenders. I think Kit will conduct the inquiry the way he feels is appropriate because he typically loves to take the law into his own hands in order to seek justice. Kit likes to use his bad behavior as an excuse to get what he wants, and if he can find the person responsible in the end, I believe he will ignore the method used to achieve his goal. Deep down, I believe he knows who did it, but there are a lot of moving parts and a number of suspects who could be involved. 3. Ronnie and Ed receive special attention. Although there are countless individuals that desire Joel's removal, Dee Dee's father Ed and Uncle Ronnie also find themselves in the public front. The first clues appear when Dee Dee informs Ronnie that Joel may have been attacked with a crowbar, and Ronnie responds suspiciously. Later, when Ronnie finds out that Debbie is planning a surprise 55th birthday celebration for him, he becomes irritated. Kit then approaches to ask him and Ed about their whereabouts on the 27th, the night Joel passed away. While Ed says he was at number 3 with Dee Dee and Michael, Ronnie says he was home by himself. Later, when Debbie notices that Joel's apartment's address is on Ronnie's car's sat-nav, he informs her that he and Michael assisted Joel in moving out of his apartment a few months prior. However, when Debbie brings it up later at the party, Michael brings up the fact that they had actually used his own car that day, which makes Debbie realize that Ronnie had lied to her. Did Joel receive another covert visit from Ronnie? What is Jesse getting up to? In another spot on the cobblestones, Sarah was taken aback to learn that her former partner Damon had offered her the cash to cover her daughter Bethany's medical expenses. 
However, she was even more shocked to learn that the money was vanished after speaking with Damon on the phone. Upon learning that the money had vanished from the prison, Damon assumed Sarah had taken the message even though Adam had originally chosen not to forward it to Sarah. That wasn't the case, though, because Gail had already committed Bethany to selling the family house by taking out a bridging loan to bring her home. Adam is accused of taking the money by Sarah right away, but he refutes the charge. The two decide that it's more plausible that Damon's cousin went to check on the cash because Daniel, Rob Mallard, is the only other person who knows the secret. At number 8, David is still dubious of Jesse's motivations with Gail, as it was shown last week that the two have been having an affair for the previous three years. Jesse informs David that he plans to use a little windfall that he expects to receive shortly to rent an apartment in Oak Hill's affluent neighborhood. Meanwhile, David is working incredibly hard to see if he can scrape together enough money to purchase the family house. When Jesse offers to help, he first expresses doubt before revealing that he's taking Gail on a romantic getaway to Whitby. David is shocked to learn that an estate agent has come outside and is pounding a for sale sign into the front garden, cutting short their talk. Afterwards, Adam tells Sarah that Jesse was close by and might have heard him talking to Daniel about Damon's money. Sarah starts to believe right away that Jesse has somehow gotten his hands on it, which would account for his apparent wealth. Sarah goes to David and asks for his assistance in demonstrating Jesse's dubious nature. When Jesse is questioned about his money after taking the Platt siblings to lunch at the Rovers, he admits that he is still waiting on money from the sale of his marital residence. After hearing the explanation, David informs Sarah that they should probably move on from Damon's lost money. However, Sarah decides to follow Jesse as he quickly leaves the Rovers. What will she find as she follows him all the way to the end of Victoria Street? 5. Daisy Pays Bethany a Visit In the meantime, Daniel informs Sarah about his recent chat with Bethany, during which she implores him to return to his former flame Daisy, Charlotte Jordan, reasoning that he won't want to stay with her now that she is permanently fitted with a stoma bag. Daisy finds herself coming to the hospital in the hopes of putting Bethany straight and reassuring her that nothing is wrong after Jenny, Sally and Matthews, confirms what she heard, leaving Daisy herself startled. But will Bethany be willing to give Daniel back and pay attention to her rival? 6. Sam suffers harm because of love. Nick may be on the verge of finding love at the restaurant when a striking patron begins making advances toward him. Nick lost both sisters as a result of having an affair with Toya behind Leanne's back and having the affair exposed. Sam, Nick's kid, is not amused by his dad's flirtatious banter and has taken the split very hard. Sam informs the concerned woman right away that Nick is engaged. Sam makes the bold decision to cook Nick and Leanne a special dinner in an effort to win them back. He's putting all the brakes on and serving oysters on the menu, not taking any chances. The only problem arises when Sam has to use a sharp knife to shuck the oysters, and soon after that he is clumsily banging on trainee paramedic Osh's door while holding a tea towel over his bloody hand. Sam needs sutures, so Asha drives him to the hospital. Nick runs to the A&E to meet them, but what will he say when he finds out that Sam's injury was solely caused by his attempts to reconcile with Nick and Leanne? Later, Leanne decides that in order for Nick to return home and to help Sam feel more at ease, she and Toya should both move out of the apartment. However, even though Leanne has made arrangements to rent the salon apartment, she tells Toya that she should find her own place because she doesn't feel ready to live with her again. 7. Max and Lauren's behavior is peculiar. Amidst the devastating news of Joel's passing, Lauren and Max receive positive news as well. Baby Frankie is doing well enough to be released from the hospital in a few of weeks. Though Bobby later confesses to Max that he still longs to be with her, Bobby is eager to reassure Lauren that both he and Max would be there to support her as she navigates life as a single mother. Nick asks casually how Lauren found the sofa, knowing that she spent the previous week staying with Max at the Platt residence. But how would Lauren respond? Max quickly leaves when Bobby discovers him and Lauren in the rovers a little while later. Bobby queries Lauren about their peculiar behavior, to which Lauren responds with an apology and quickly leaves. What exactly is happening between the two? 8. Hope becomes unwell. At number 9, Fizz informs Tyrone that their daughter is feeling under the weather, suggesting that Hope's vaping may have caught up with her. Hope was supposed to return to school that day after her suspension, but Fizz had to take the day off work to take care of her, so Hope is forced to miss work. 
Ties fears that Hope has a chest infection and that vaping is probably contributing to it are confirmed by Dr. Gaddis. Will Hope give up before causing any more harm to herself? 9. Stu intends to depart from Weatherfield. After Mason was made to move out by Yasmin, who had wanted to give the teenager a stable home as he tried to turn his life around after being released from the Young Offenders Center, Stu is still upset at Speed Doll. Mason says a social worker has found him a new place to live, but Stu can't help but express his dissatisfaction with Yasmin. How will Yasmin respond when Stu later tells him that he is considering going to Germany to be nearer to his granddaughter Eliza?